quest. It's a quest for fun. Well, The Rock says, why don't we just cut right to the chase? Okay, now he, uh, you know, he wants to get together. Well, you know, he wants to talk. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about me. It's showtime, folks! What are you? I'm... Hello there. Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to another episode of our interview series here at Neuroculture. I am your host, Ryan. And November, yes, we're into the holiday season. Yes, there's a lot of things going on. Yes, we're unfortunately still in the middle of something known as a pandemic. But that is not going to stop us from celebrating this holiday season. Now, here in November, more specifically, it is National Novel Writing Month. And we're going to kick off our celebration with our guest for tonight. She is a sci fi fantasy author from Crazy A Press. She is the one, the only Mary fan. Mary, how are you tonight? And welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm good. And by the way, that's an awesome opening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I can't take credit for putting that together. That would be Josh Bauer of J. Bauer Art. He is the man who puts together all the intros and some of the other things that go on behind the scenes at Hanging With Web Show, Web TV, as well as other programming. So thank you, Josh. We really appreciate it. Great intro. It's getting rave reviews all over the interwebs. So thank you, Josh. So once again, Mary, thanks for being with us on the show. We really do appreciate it. It is National Novel Writing Month. Wow, that's a lot of words. It's a lot of things to say, but it's a lot to celebrate. What can what can what else can we do? So to start things off uh, with you here, Mary, what were some of your favorite books and writers growing up as a young Padawan? So when I was a kid, I read a lot of books for I guess older people, and this was the fault of one little dog named Wishbone on PBS. I don't know if you remember that show. Um, by the way, that's my cat. You see sort of walking around over there. Um, <laughs> but there was a show on PBS called Wishbone. It's about a little dog who would like explore classic literature, you know, dress as the characters and stuff. And the idea, of course, was to encourage kids to go out and read the books. And I, being a nerdy kid, went out and read these like, you know, 500 page tomes that usually aren't assigned to high school. So but I, I really enjoyed them, um, partially because I was nerdy and I just liked the idea of reading big books. So like Victor Hugo was one of my favorites. Um, like Hunchback is still one of my favorite books of all time. I also really liked Gone with the Wind, even though now I realize it's frowned upon for a lot of its depictions of people who are not, well, wealthy white Southerners. Um, you know what, it is an interesting character study. Like. Read it with all its flaws, you know, read it and read the commentary on it. And yeah. And let's see, what else did I read? Oh, and then in the sci-fi world, I read a lot of the really old school sci-fi authors like Jack Williamson. And I guess from another era, like, you know, like Frederick Pohl and Ben Bova and a lot of like the mid-century authors or later you know, 20th century authors. Hmm. All right. All right. And yes, I do, in fact, remember that little TV series that if you grew up in the 90s, you might might have heard it before. Wishbone. Yes. I remember the intro. I remember the dog just running around, putting on different outfits, trying to be a sleuth. I think one time Wishbone dressed up as Sherlock Holmes, maybe. Another favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I believe Sherlock Holmes was one of the main characters that the dog portrayed or tried to put together for his lovely outfits. Yeah, I remember that show. Those were good times. A lot of good shows on PBS and, and WET, you know, WIDA and the other public access channels and things of that nature. I remember turning the dials and flipping through the channel. Oh, yeah. Those were some good times in the 90s. Oh, yeah. I must, I must say. Good pick. Wishbone, that's a good throwback. I like that. Now, when exactly did you decide to become a writer? What was your aha moment when it all clicked for you? I feel like I kind of had two writing eras, if you will. First was when I was really little, like 12, like shortly after reading all these books, I was like, let me try writing one. Um, and for about like maybe three or four years, which when you're, you know, 12 to 15 feels like a billion years, I was just writing a lot of just sci-fi nonsense on my computers with big dreams of getting published someday. And then high school kind of ramped up and I stopped because I got busy with high school and college and stuff. But it was after I graduated college that I started my current era that's I feel really old saying this, but in the spring, I will have been writing kind of consistently for 10 years. Wow. <laughs> that is ama that's amazing. Congratulations on 10 years. That's, that's amazing. That's, yeah. a nice, that's a nice feather to have in anyone's cap. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, before when people were sent, or would ask me, like, have you been doing this for a while? I'd be like, well, not compared to, you know, some people out there. But, you know, I feel like once I pass the 10-year threshold, I'll be able to say, yes. Yes, I've been doing this for a while. Hmm. Well, if I had an actual glass with an actual drink inside of it, I would drink to that. Cheers to that. <laughs> there you go. What, what have been some of the, would you say, biggest rewards of being a writer? Um... I mean, first there's that satisfaction of finishing a manuscript. I mean, I still just remember how good it felt like back in like, you know, 2011 or whatever it was when I first started writing and I hadn't written anything like any fiction really since I was a kid. And I was like, okay, let me just try doing this again. You know, I used to think it was fun. Um, you know, I was right out of college. And when you're right out of college, you suddenly realize how many hours of the day you used to spend on homework. Because once all that goes away, you're just like, oh my God, I have all this free time. What am I going to do with myself? And so I was like, let me try this whole writing thing again. And I did. And for a while, it was just like faffing around. But then I finished that manuscript. And I was like, that felt really good. Like being to be like, yeah, I wrote that and I finished it. So, and even though I've written a lot more manuscripts since then, like every time I put the final period on something and there's a little moment of, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Now, on the flip side of that, what have been some of the challenges of being a writer? Oh, rejections. Well, I'll say that. Like, it sucks because you finished your manuscript. You're so proud of yourself. You're so happy. And then you're like, okay, world, look at what I've got for you. And the world's like, nah, no thanks. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Yes, yes. Rejection is a difficult thing to deal with. Sometimes you have, we all have our good days and bad days. And if you get rejected one too many times, it's, you kind of think to yourself, why am I still doing this again? Hmm. Yep. It's like, Gee. Do I even be a writer? Am I any good? Oh no, maybe I should just quit. Yeah. And then you I'm get gonna, another idea and you're like, nah, I'm not quitting. Mm -mm. I'm going to need another drink over here. Charlie? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And by the way, for those of you who are watching us live, thank you for your comments. If you have any questions for our guest, Mary Fantine, we're going to save a little bit of time at the end of the show to take some of your live questions. So feel free to drop them in the comments as we go along. And thank you for those of you who are joining us tonight. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. So there's this team of writers out there, and I'm curious, how did you end up becoming a part of the legends known as Crazy 8 Press? How did that happen? So it started with um, basically me going to conventions to promote that first book because, you know, my book came out. I was really excited about it. And the rest of the world was like, eh, another book. What you going to do? So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to show you my book. I'm going to go to cons. I'm going to meet sci-fi lovers, sci-fi readers. And, you know, they would never find it in the bookstore or in Amazon because there's a gazillion books out there. But maybe if they meet me, I can persuade them to give it a try. So I started going to a lot of conventions and that's how I met the crazy eight guys just kind of because we were all authors. We were all in the same like dealer's room. We were all on the same panels and a couple of us all worked in midtown Manhattan at the same time. Um, like specifically it was Aaron Rosenberg and Russ Colchimero who like worked within a few blocks of me and we'd meet up for lunch every so often, you know, just to escape our boring corporate day jobs. Um, got to chatting. And then at one point Aaron and Russ said to me like, hey, you know, we've been talking to the crazy eight guys, like we're kind of looking to grow our ranks. I think at the time they were actually the crazy seven. So they were looking to expand that. And I was like, yeah, sure, that'd be awesome. So that was you. You're the reason why it's crazy eight, not so much the lucky number seven. Yep, although we may be a different number soon. Stay tuned. I don't think I'm allowed to say anything yet. But probably a little teaser. Ah. Uh. Man, teasers, teaser trailers, <laughs> t trailer announcements. We all see these things on the interwebs, but geez. I feel like that's like kind of a teaser for a trailer. <laughs> for the trailer, for the... No. <laughs> oh, geez. It's like a promo photo so, that's a teaser for the teaser for trailer. That's a... Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little surprised that... Just a quick sidebar here. I'm a little surprised that Hollywood's doing that now. Why? Just give us a teaser and then the full-length trailer and be done with it. Gee whiz, how hard is it? I know. It's like they give you like a 10-second trailer for the two minute trailer that's coming in like a month. And I'm like, wait, can you give me an ad for an ad? Sorry, I digress. <laughs> yeah, just drop the trailer already, internet. It's not that difficult. That's just my two cents on the matter. But anyhow, Crazy Seven goes to Crazy Eight because of the one and only Mary fan. That is a, <laughs> mm, that's a heck of a story, I love it. Any, 
any particular or any special memories from being at conventions or book signings or other events that you've been to in the past? Um, oh my goodness. I mean, there are a lot of memories and a lot of great memories, so it's hard to pick one. I mean, honestly, my favorite part is just getting to meet readers. Um, you know, standing behind that booth, you know, with all your books and, you know, sometimes you get a little bored. You're like, okay, someone just come talk to me. And then someone does, and they talk to you about what they like to read and you talk about what you like to read. And then sometimes they actually want to read one of your books, which is also a great feeling. Um, I actually love answering questions about writing and publishing and all that. Like, that's why I love doing panels. Um, you know, sometimes after the panel is done, it, you know, panel maybe got crazy and somebody didn't get a chance to answer the questions. They like kind of come up to you like nervously. It's like, hey, if you have a minute, I have another question, if that's okay. I'm like, yes, it's okay. Please ask, because I love to talk, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah, to give our viewers just a little bit of a peek behind the curtain, uh, the first time I met you, as well as the other members of the team of Crazy Eight, as well as other writers, was, in fact, at Shore Leave Convention in Hunt Valley, as well as, what was I think the other one is Far Point, which is in normally in February, and then you also have... And also, because of the unfortunate situation with the pandemic, you and a few of the other writers from Crazy Eight were originally scheduled to be a part of the great Philadelphia Comic Con earlier this year in Oaks, Pennsylvania. Now, I've been to that convention a number of times over the, over the years. Great event, really well run, and the, the layout of the event is really good, and the people there are great. They're nice, respectful, all that kind of jazz. It would have been nice if this pe freaking pandemic didn't happen because I could have seen you and I think what was it uh, Robert Greenberger was supposed to be there I think uh, who was another one Russ was supposed to be in attendance yep Aaron was gonna go yep what would have been nice yeah Gee I whiz. think it was for like the first weekend in April or something which was right when everybody was freaking out yes it was in the first or second week of April was when things were starting to develop everyone's was in their major i mean people are still struggling yes because everyone is still you know upset about it they're, they're they get parent their anxiety is through the roof and i understand that so when that happened you know i was thinking about it and i'm thinking man great philadelphia comic-con they had a really good guest lineup and i'm not just talking about the writers uh the writers are great but the celebrity lineup was great too it's like could have met that star could have met that person could have met the voice of hawk girl the voice of wonder woman from justice league why I know, and Shirley had a really great lineup this year as well. Um, I don't remember exactly who was on there, but I just remember they had like something like eight or nine celebrities, and I was like, yes, I want their autograph. Yes, I want their photo op. Like, I'm going to be out so much money because this lineup looks great. And then, stupid pandemic. Yeah. I believe Dennis Lawson, uh, the original actor who played Wedge and Tilly's from Star Wars, was scheduled to be at Shirley this summer. I think so, and I think um, Brent Spiner and maybe one of the other TNG cast members. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's hard to have a shore leave without someone from Star Trek. Sure. You know, I mean, just a little peek behind the curtain before we move on to the next question. Shore leave convention, which is held in Hunt Valley during the course of every summer, is based and created in mostly in part because of its love for Star Trek. So they like to boldly go where no conventions have gone before. There's your plug, shore leave. We love you. So the next question I have for you here, Mary, is kind of a bigger one here. Maybe a million-dollar question. We don't know. We'll see if you have to use a lifeline or not. I hope oh boy. you understood. I hope some of you who are watching this understood my references. What advice would you have for aspiring writers? Hmm. Now, do you mean writers who have already written a book or who have not yet written a book? Because those are two very different questions. To be a little bit more specific, for those who haven't written a novel yet. Well, then my advice is to write a novel. <laughs> I know, just like that, right? Yeah, I, I know it's not that simple, but I guess my advice is just go for it. Like, if you have that novel in your heart, like you have that story in your soul that you're like, this is the story I want to tell, just write it, which is actually a lot harder than it sounds. Like, you know, you're like, oh, just write it, why not? But part of the thing that makes writers procrastinate is that these ideas in our heads, they seem amazing. They're like, you know, they're shiny, they're wonderful, they're exciting. You know, they seem like, oh my God, this looks going to be the best book ever. Everyone's going to love it. And then you have to turn them into little black letters on a screen, which are not very exciting. You know, maybe in your head, you're seeing like, you know, dragons and castles and knights. And then all you get is little black letters on a screen that you had to put there, which can be kind of disheartening because like, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've reread a paragraph of mine being like, okay, in my head, I see this amazing steampunk dragon boat. Uh... There was a boat and it had propellers. Propellers are steampunk, right? 
So yeah, I get it. It's like a lot of pressure to turn your shiny idea into words, especially since first drafts are by definition bad. I mean, there's a reason why they're called rough drafts. Like everybody's first draft is by definition terrible. I mean, some are more terrible than others, but pick any writer on the earth. I don't care how many best-selling titles they have, how many awards or Nobel prizes even that they racked up. I guarantee you their first draft sucks. I mean, there will be people who say it doesn't suck, but it sucks. And they know it too. That's why they have editors. Um, and we don't see that. We don't see that process. We only see the final product. Like, you know, we only see the finished movie. We don't get to see, you know, the ugly parts where, you know, some poor assistant is running on stage with like a water bottle for like an actor who's about to like pass out in their Mandalorian suit or something. Like all those messy parts we don't see. We only see the shiny final product. So for writers, like, just remember that that part exists, even if you don't see it. Like, every writer has had those moments where they just get stuck and they don't know how to describe something or the dialogue is just really terribly clunky and they just can't figure out how to make it smooth or or maybe they just need to get their characters from point A to point B and they can't figure out how to do it in an exciting way. Like, we've all been there. Just write it anyway. Like, just write it, get it out there, let it be terrible. A first draft job is just to exist. You can worry about making it good later. Just, just write the damn thing. And whiskey help. <laughs> whatever, it could be, whatever drink uh, gets you through the day, the morning, the night, the burning the midnight oil, maybe burning the candles at both ends. Ah, 3 a.m. in my case today. Gee willikers. I haven't been up at 3 a.m. since I was... Wow, I'm really dating myself, aren't I? Maybe I was a teenager. I'm trying to think. Maybe it was on a trip when I was down at the beach one time. Hmm. <laughs> I might have to think about that for a minute. I'll get back to you. But aside from that, so straight to it, write it, do whatever's whatever in there, go for it. I hear you, one hundred percent. Completely under, completely understandable as well. Now here, here in present times, and every, you know, despite the pandemic and everything, who would you say are some of your favorite writers nowadays? You know, I don't like that question. Is nowadays I know a lot of writers, so I feel like whenever I list them. I always leave someone out and, or someone's going to get bummed that I didn't name them. So I'm just going to say all of them there. Now you can't get mad at me. <laughs> well, the thing is, I do think that everybody has the potential to be somebody's favorite writer, even if it's just that one special reader who's going to really connect with their work. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's no, no problem at all. It's kind of like, you know, when you're being pressured to give that award speech at the Oscars and you only give you like less than 60 seconds to do your thank you speech, you can't really name everybody because it's a short amount of, it's a short time window. Yep. And then, you know, someone's always going to be like, well, why didn't you name me? It's like, I'm sorry. I choked. I was like, I got an Oscar or whatever. <laughs> I mean, that'd be a good problem to have. I would love to have that problem. Of course, of course. Now, I'm going to go over to the chat here. You're getting, again, we have a few questions here from our audience as well as some lovely comments. Throwing back to that 90s show, Christian says, Wishbone the dog is very cool. Greg, who is watching us from backstage on the Nerd Culture page, says, Wishbone was amazing. There you go, Greg. Let's see. Christian also says, Cheers to a decade of words for you, Mary. Oh, well, thank you. That's amazing. That's amazing. And then uh, Christian also says, a trailer for a trailer. How meta of them. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> uh, here's, a, here's a question from Christian. Favorite conventions you can recommend for new authors? Shore Leave and Farpoint. Not necessarily in that, uh, in that order. I love both of you guys. <laughs> but really, both of these conventions, um, you know, not only do they have a lot of great guest speakers, but they actually both have really strong writer tracks, um, you know, just panel listings with, you know, a lot of great sci-fi authors, you know, people who've written for Star Trek, for, um, you know, SG-1, for Star Wars. And that's where they go and they spill all their secrets. Like, you know, you can go to a, you know, best-selling Star Trek author at Shore Leave and say, hey, how do you plot a novel? And he will answer. And so, yeah, I definitely recommend those two because the writers are fantastic. There's a lot of great programming, a lot of great panels, and the writers are really accessible. So if you really have like a question like, you know, like, what do you do to keep the middle of your book from dragging? They will, they will answer. They will be happy to answer. Of course. Of course. I mean, as me as well, I'm sure a lot of you who are watching us have been to conventions, wonderful panels, wonderful people to meet, and they're always happy to answer uh, 
questions, and I've had the pleasure of meeting a lot of uh, you know writers, and I wouldn't know about their books otherwise unless I actually you know met them at the convention, sat down with them, got to know them a little better, and all that kind of jazz. And you get good stories out of it. You get autographs. They get to talk with you for X amount of time because it's one of the best things about conventions. We like the chit chat. So nothing wrong with nothing wrong with that. Abs abs absolutely not. So. The next thing, next question I have for you, you know, with the pandemic and everything, have you, uh, you know, chosen to go down a few different uh, kind of paths? Have you learned any new skills during the course of this pandemic? New skills. Um, I mean, I've gotten really good at working out on my pull-up bar. Not necessarily doing pull-ups. <laughs> okay, so for a little bit of context, um, I do circus arts. Um, I do the fabrics, the, the split fabrics that you might have seen on Cirque du Soleil. Of course, when the pandemic shut down, there was no place to go do that. And I have a pull-up bar just for conditioning. And at first, I was just doing, like, you know, boring shoulder shrugs and stuff, just trying to stay moderately in shape so that when they opened the gyms again, I'd be able to at least climb. Um but, you know, that gets boring, and so I started just doing funky tricks on that thing instead. Gives Mike Friedman a heart attack because apparently once he fell off of a pull-up bar and, like, broke his tooth or something. So every time I post another selfie of me, like, hanging from my knees from my door frame, he's just like, get down from there, young lady. I'm like, okay, Graham. Love you, Mike. <laughs> All right. All right. I can dig that. I can dig that. Do you have any writers that you hope to work with or maybe meet once convention slash earth reopens again? Um, work with, I'm not sure because you know, I've not really done a collaborative project before. I mean, so, and I actually don't even know if I'd be cut out for it just because I feel like I have pretty strong opinions about where I want my stories to go. But that said, you know, never say never. And I mean, yeah, I'd love to meet some of the um, the newer Star Trek off, not Star Trek, Star Wars authors who have been putting out a lot of stuff. Um, I kind of noticed that Star Wars seems to be mining the YA bestseller list for their authors, like Justina Ireland, Daniel Jose Older, um, Rebecca Roanhorse, and I like all of their their work, and so it'd be lovely to meet them. All right, all right. Any uh, actors from some of your favorite movies or TV series that you would want to meet somewhere down the line at conventions or other events? Mm, let's see. Well, I had wanted to meet Carrie Fisher, and I'm still not over that. Mm. <sighs> Maybe her ghost rest, will come one day. I know. Yeah, I'm rest, still re, rest in peace, Princess Leia. Yeah, I'm still mad at New York Comic Con because her final time doing that, I actually had a chance to go because my sister managed to get two tickets. But this was the year they introduced their stupid fan verification system. And even though, you know, my sister, my own flesh and blood, she was verified. She had two tickets. She was not allowed to give me one. And so, yeah, she ended up being like, okay, screw this. Like, I'll just sell the tickets and we'll go next year. And, of course, there was not a next year for Carrie. So, New York Comic Con, screw you. That is... That is so. That is so wrong beyond measure. How is that even possible for something like that to happen to you? Jeez. I know. I, mean, I know. So to fight scalpers, but they ended up just hurting real fans. That that to me just sounds ridiculous, man. I mean, to be perfectly blunt, you got the short end of the straw, and that's not cool. So. <sighs> for real, like I said, it's been like four years. And I'm still not over it. Hmm. Man. man. Yeah, my fandom for Star Wars grew when that little indie film called The Force Awakens came out and blew my uh, <laughs> blew everyone away, and it really knocked me on my keister because I saw it six times in the theater, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I saw it five times. There, all right, see. So what if you six? But I ran out of friends. Ran out of friends. You run out <laughs> of friends? Get out of here! Get out of town! You're. That's that sounds like bantha fodder. You're 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 joking, right? No. Okay. Um, sorry, I just thought I'd throw a little bit of a Star Wars reference for good measure. But my goodness, yeah, Force Awakens. Oh, I love that movie so much. I don't care yeah. what anyone else says, but I I love that movie to pieces. Hmm, Princess Leia. Okay. To, I managed to meet uh, John Boyega when he was at Awesome Con, and that's probably one oh. of the highlights of my fan experience. Mm. I was wearing the Finn jacket, and he complimented it, and I was just like, okay, I can go die happy now. Did you? I was at Awesome Con that year when John Boyega was in attendance. I didn't get a chance to see him uh, because 
his line is like what 50 miles deep no thank you uh, <laughs> i have patience mary but there's only so much patience one can endure but yeah john boyega that that's cool that you have the jacket and he spotted you with that that is some cool stuff yeah it was that was awesome i would yeah. love it if daisy ridley would do a show but i don't think she i don't think she will she doesn't seem like a con girl you know, sometimes with these actors, like from their interviews, you can just tell who'd be up for a con and who wouldn't. And I get it. Like a con must be like a really harrowing experience for a lot of actors. Because, you know, you are probably talking to like, you know, a hundred fans in like 20 minutes or something. It could be overwhelming. But Daisy, if you ever want to come out, we love it. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Any other names you want to throw out there for your, uh, your bucket list for celebrities or superstars you want to meet? Um... As long as we're making wish lists, Felicity Jones. Mm. She okay. was at Star Wars Celebration that one year in Orlando, but her photos were just like way too expensive. And they sold out in like three seconds. Oh my. Yeah. Because I think everyone kind of knew, like, you know, she's a prestige actress. And so she's probably not going to be doing cons a lot because, you know, she's out there making Oscar movies. So I think, and also she was Jin Erso, and this was right after Rogue One came out. Mm-hmm. Which is another film I'm very fond of. Me too. We had uh, we had a couple of good ones, and then a couple of not so good ones. <laughs> We've had a mixed bag, to say the least. Once uh, Star Wars was bought by Disney, and then ever since 2015, when Force Awakens and so and so and other films came out, and other properties started to come out. Yeah, it's been a mixed bag, and boy, do I have thoughts on those for days. But that's what? another show. <laughs> that's another show entirely, but that's a good uh, wish list for yourself, Mary. I do hope you get a chance to meet some of these names that you've mentioned. I, I do, too. Thanks. <laughs> mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. Now, on the, a little bit of a different, a little bit of a different side of things, just out of curiosity, would you rather give up all drinks except for water or give up eating anything that was cooked in an oven? Anything cooked in an oven? Mm -hmm. So I can still have my stovetop goods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The question was, would you rather give up all drinks except for water or give up eating anything that was cooked in an oven? The second one. Can't give up my beverages. I mean, I can't function without coffee and alcohol. <laughs> Literally how I get anything written. There'd be no books without those two substances. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. What happened on your worst date? My worst date? Uh, let's see. Well, the one where I got stood up, that one sucked because I'd gone into Manhattan for that. And I was just like waiting outside like this dive bar like a loser before I realized, oh, she's not coming. Uh, okay. I better get out of here. Um, so that's, that sucks. Um, and then there was another one, which was just weird in that this guy, anything I said, he had to one up me somehow or like put down whatever it was. It, it was like, he'd be like, okay, so what do you do for a living? I'd be like, oh, I work in marketing. I write books. He'd be like, oh, books. Yeah. There's not a lot of money in that. Is there? I'm like, no, I, I, I guess not. And he's like, what do you write? It's like, I write sci-fi. Like, oh, sci-fi. Okay, yeah, I don't really like sci-fi. I'm like, you suck. How do I hear? <laughs> <laughs> and he had the nerve to text me afterward and say he had a good time. Yeah, that was grounds for ghosting. Hmm. That's okay. <laughs> hmm. Snide remarks, a bit peculiar on on that person's part. But anyhow. <laughs> So what would you say would be the absolute worst ingredients to fill a burrito with? Uh, I mean, there's a couple out there that are just terrible. Um, spam. Spam burritos would really suck. <laughs> and we're not talking about spam that's in your email folder, ladies and gentlemen. We're actually talking about the physical manifestation of something I called mean, spam. That would be pretty disgusting, too, if you were eating computer chips in your, in your burrito. Yeah, on that occasion, maybe, maybe not. Maybe Skynet would have taken over at that point. I'm not sure. I have to think about that for a while. Apologize. <laughs> Just saying. So if everything within your house had to be one color, what color would you choose? 
Hmm. Probably blue because it's soothing. Fun fact, my favorite color is blue. Nice. True story. One of the reasons I'm wearing a navy blue shirt. Oh, it looks kinda, black from here. <laughs> I know. It's I I apologize. It kind of, you know, with the background and everything I have here in my, you know, two two hundred thousand dollar non existent studio, it's you know <laughs> some things show up as different colors than some other outfits that I may be wearing. So you never know what you're gonna get. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, if you could look through one person's email without them knowing whose email would you want to look through? Oh my goodness. That's a tough one. Um, you know what? Kathleen Kennedy's. I want to know what she's doing over there. Mm -hmm. I want to know who she's working on. I want to know who she's mad at. I want to know who she likes. I want to know what she's thinking. Yeah. Kathleen Kennedy. I'm coming for her email. All right, all right, all right. I I can totally understand that with some of the decisions that she, that she's made and maybe some of the executives have made over there, might be a bit questionable. May want to look through those emails, see what kind of communications are going through those certain channels. Yeah, it'd be really interesting just to know like what happened behind the scene that gave us three movies that sometimes didn't feel like they had anything to do with each other. That's true. Well. <laughs> I mean, most people know this at this point. They didn't have a plan for that new trilogy. They just kind of, they were winging it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I know they did that with the originals too, no matter what George Lucas says, but at least he was the engine behind all the wing in it. So it's like the wing in it had a vision. Hmm. That's, that's true. That's true. They were, I guess with the new trilogy, they were winging it. They just weren't doing it with an X wing or a Y wing <laughs> or a wing or just any kind of, kind of, winged fighter that takes place within the star wars galaxy it was com something completely separate from that who knows what goes on at the offices of star wars lucas filming executives all that kind of jazz boy wouldn't some of these fans like to be a fly on the wall hmm. Indeed. i'm curious we're just curious disney we don't mind but anyway if you ever want to invite us give us a holler any upcoming projects that you can tell us about mary well, let's see. There's Thrilling Adventure Yarns 2021, which, by the way, if you haven't packed it on Kickstarter, there's like, what, like 48 hours left or something. It's a pulp anthology um, put together by our very own Bob Greenberger of Crazy 8 Press, who is, you know, as you all know, kind of a legend of the geek world with his extensive, you know, work with uh, DC Comics and such. Um, but yeah, this anthology is a celebration of the pulp magazines of yore that kind of gave us geek culture as we know it today. Like this is where kind of like those superhero stories originated, like those really over the top adventures. Um, so yeah, Thrilling Adventure Yarns 2021. It's a collection of short stories. I have a story in there. It's a horror story and it's my very first uh, full blown horror story. So that was fun. Yeah, the nice thing about doing these anthologies is that that's your chance to explore genres. You know, Bob was like, okay, everybody pick a pick a pulpy genre like here's kind of the list of standard pulp genres and i was like horror i haven't done that one yet so let's try it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely and we wish you and the rest of the team all the best of luck with thrilling adventure yarns 2021 we look forward to seeing how it all turns out now i want to take this opportunity to thank you for those of you watching us live thank you so much for joining us tonight we really appreciate it and to kind of wrap things up here for us, Mary, where can everyone find you on social media and on the and all the upcoming projects you have coming down the line? So easiest place is to start with my website, maryfan.com, because that's easy to remember. And I've got all my links right there on the homepage. So you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can even shoot me an email if you want. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And for those of you who are wondering, where on earth did Ryan find some of those bizarro questions that he was asking Mary about, whether it be about burritos, terrible dates, or other kind of situations that we may have been thrown in? Well, I'll tell you where I got them. Those are actually, this episode is powered by Poddex. Poddex are unique interview questions and episode starting prompts within the palm of your hand. So whether you are a new podcaster or you've been doing it for a while and you're looking to grow your audience or get more engagement, you're going to want to check out Poddex 
Com. Now, when you go to poddex.com, make sure you use code NERDCULTURE for 10% off your first order. You will not be sorry, nor will you be disappointed. In the meantime, thank you for joining us tonight for this episode of the interview series here at Nerd Culture. My name is Ryan. You can follow me and everything we're doing here on our YouTube channel across all platforms of social media at It's Nerd Culture. In the meantime, once again, thank you to Mary Fan from Crazy A Press for being with us tonight. Remember to stay healthy, stay strong, stay safe, and... Read some books.